Hi, I'm Ty Pendlebury from CNET.com and this is a review of the Logitech Squeezebox Touch. Personally, I've been looking for a digital music streamer for myself for a long time. And though the Sonos system is really good, it's limited in its inability to play high resolution audio files. And while it's been out for a while, the Logitech Squeezebox Touch is the first digital music streamer I've seen that ticks all the boxes for sound quality and is easy to use and fun. The device itself consists of a 4.3 inch touch screen and despite its plastic looking fascia, it comes with a stable metal base. The screen is quite small for use across the room where its touchability becomes useless anyway, but you can increase the size of the fonts for use with a remote control or just use it to display cover art. But regardless, I think the main control method will be either via a tablet or smartphone with apps available for both iOS and Android and you can also use PC and Macs. As an older device, the Logitech lacks proper DLNA support, but uses its own proprietary server which runs from a PC or Netgear NAS. As such, the device has more appeal than Geeks than the competitive Sonos device, which just works. But if you have a big library like me or exotic file types and like to tweak the look and feel of your device, then the Squeezebox is for you. Making playlists is easy and its integration with Spotify in particular is superb. Even if you just use this device as an internet radio, it works really well. Sound quality was surprising with excellent sound coming out of the onboard analog outputs. But you can add an outboard digital processor or just connect a digital cable to your receiver. While it's not perfect, it can sometimes suffer from brain farts and lose its 802.11g connection. I think this is the best device of its type so far, especially if you use an ethernet cable connection. While it's more expensive than a Roku, it's cheaper than most dedicated audio components, and at 250 online, it's highly recommended. This has been Ty Pendlebury for CNET.com.